It's Friday, October 28th, 2022, and this is the Washington Times front page. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. The U.S. gross domestic product rose 2.6% after two straight months of contraction, with more exports and increases in consumer and government spending. Dave Boyer and Tom Howe report the Bureau of Economic Analysis report said increases in consumer spending on health care and other items were offset in part by decreased spending on automobiles and food and beverages. Federal government spending was driven by defense spending, and state and local government spending was fueled by an increase in pay for government employees. Economists, though, say the third quarter bump masks underlying economic weaknesses and will likely be temporary. Investors fear slowing growth in the fourth quarter and a downturn or recession next year. Driving those concerns is a housing slowdown. Mortgage rates this week exceeded 7% for the first time since April of 2002. The average 30-year fixed mortgage rate hit 7.08%, up from 6.94% last week, according to Freddie Mac. As a result, home sales have fallen to the lowest level in 15 years. Democrats are pouring in cash, making last-minute messaging pivots, and deploying high-profile guests on the stump in races where Republicans suddenly pose bigger threats just before Election Day. Susan Fariccio reports they're pulling out their most potent weapons, including former President Barack Obama, who plans to campaign for newly vulnerable Democrats in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Georgia, Wisconsin, and Nevada. Polls show Republican candidates surging in Senate and gubernatorial races in those states. In New England, where Republicans are posing a rare challenge to House and Senate candidates, First Lady Jill Biden will be on the trail. She'll campaign in Portsmouth, New Hampshire this weekend for Senator Maggie Hayson, a Democrat who's suddenly threatened by a surge in polls by Republican challenger Don Bolduck. The First Lady will also campaign for Congressman Chris Pappas in New Hampshire. Polls show he's tied with Republican challenger Caroline Levitt. Cracks have begun to show in the once rock-solid bipartisan support in Washington for providing Ukraine with the backing it needs to fend off Russia's now eight-month-old invasion. Doubts within the Democratic and Republican parties have spilled into the open, Guy Taylor reports, with the Biden administration scrambling to downplay discord against a backdrop of increasingly heated midterm election rhetoric. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy triggered party hand-wringing by warning that Republicans wouldn't write a blank check to send military and economic support to Ukraine if they win back the majority. Establishment Republicans such as Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell are pressing the president to increase U.S. support for Ukraine. Others, most notably former Vice President Mike Pence, have openly chastised fellow Republicans who don't aggressively stand against Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion. You can read all of these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. You can also find the entire lineup of Washington Times podcasts at WashingtonTimes.com slash podcasts. Former Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor famously imposed an expiration date on affirmative action, writing in a 2003 majority ruling that she expected race-based preferences would no longer be needed to balance out school admissions in 25 years. With the clock now ticking toward that deadline, Stephen Dynan reports the Supreme Court will take up her challenge on Monday. Two cases, one challenging Harvard University, the other the University of North Carolina, give the justices their best chance in decades to deliver a firm set of rules to schools still struggling with thorny issues of race. The Asian American plaintiffs in the upcoming cases upend the usual debate, and add a layer of nuance to what has been a largely black and white issue. And finally, House Republicans have released evidence they say shows Hunter Biden may have been compromised by Chinese intelligence through a business associate. Joseph Clark reports House Oversight and Reform Committee ranking member James Comer sent a letter this week to FBI Director Christopher Wray revealing emails between Biden and Jackie Bao. Lawmakers claim Bao maintained ties to Chinese intelligence while advising the Biden family. An FBI spokesperson said the Bureau received the letter, but declined to comment further. Find all today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or the Washington Times app, and find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in any major podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. The Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.